good morning. Why don't we all stand and uh, let's have Brother Jim, if you would, lead us in a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that you provided for us. Come out and worship, Lord. These parishioners come out and pray that they have a safe week. And Brother Lennon, as he brings them to us, Lord, Lord, we just pray for souls to save all these souls that just need saving, Lord. We just don't know what's going on right now, but the abominations in this United States is getting to a critical stage, and we just pray, Lord, that Thy will be done. Lord, we ask you to be with our prayer requests, spoken and unspoken, for all of our uh, missionaries, wherever they might be, Lord, we pray for their safety and, and their health. Lord, we just, we just ask you to, as we start up, this will be the last Sunday in July, and next Sunday we'll start a new month, and we just pray that it's a lot better than this one, and it's been, we just pray that things get turned around and we can get, get you back in some kind of moments. We ask all this in blessed name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, BC. And it's good to see everybody this morning. Hope you all enjoy the service. Uh, you know, we've been talking about how we can't sing, and that's frustrating and disappointing for us. So I'm going to try something this morning. No, I'm not going to get a solo up here. Uh, I'm going to, I have a poem and I thought, and maybe it's a song uh, too, but thought maybe just read something like this uh, just to give us a little bit different uh, as, and we'll still have Sherry play the song and we've got Adelaide and Sherry giving us a special, but I wanted to read this and I hope it's encouraging to us here this morning. It says this, one pair of hands formed the mountains, one pair of hands formed the sea, one pair of hands made the sun and the moon, every bird, every flower, every tree. One pair of hands formed the valleys, the ocean, the rivers, and the sand. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith in the one pair of hands. One pair of hands healed the sick. One pair of hands raised the dead. One pair of hands calmed the raging storm, and thousands of people were fed. One pair of hands said, I love you, and those hands were nailed to a tree. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into those one pair of hands. Amen. Hope you all enjoyed that. We'll try to do something like that. I said it's tough not being able to sing uh, uh, out loud like this, but uh, we'll try to do something like that. And I thought I saw that, and it was, it was pretty good. So uh, anyway, we'll have Sherry play. We'll give the prayer list after that, and then they'll have that special. <laughs> Adelaide gets up here I'll read this prayer list and it's not getting any shorter uh, we continue to pray for these missionaries and we keep hearing these letters on Wednesday night and 
uh, just, just so many challenges there, but some encouragement uh, as well. But pray for them. Pray for the unspoken prayer request and continue to pray for Mrs. Vice and for Mrs. Walker and keep praying for Mrs. Kimbrell. Continue to pray for Charles and Mary Sargent. Pray for Charlie Roberts, for Benny Hilton, and continue to pray for Mamie. Also keep praying for Barbara, but she seems like she's getting better there, but pray for her. Pray for Marcy in Missouri. Pray for Jeannie in Missouri. Also pray for Dottie Jo, Granny's sister. Pray for her there in Missouri as well, if you would. Uh, keep praying for Beulah. Sounds like maybe she'll come home Tuesday if all goes as, as planned, so pray for that. Pray for Betty Lee. Keep praying for Ken, and it's good to see him here this morning, uh, but continue to pray for him and his recovery there. Uh, and then uh, remember, uh, oh, well, I should mention, Mr. Marshall we've been praying for, uh, he passed away, and so pray for the family there. And then also we've been praying for Johnny's mother. She passed away, and we had a good graveside service uh, Friday uh, for that. Uh, but, but home with the Lord, as I mentioned on on Wednesday, but pray for them and the family there. Uh, and, and as I've been also mentioning, just continue to pray for this church, pray for the attendance and pray for those that aren't coming out that they'll get touched in some way. And we have a pretty good crowd and quite a few people over there uh, as well. And so uh, that's encouraging, but just keep praying for the church and pray for our, our preacher if you would, ladies. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. I tell you what, that's that's mighty, that's mighty fine.
we want to hear some more of that, don't we? Turn with me this morning to Joshua in chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3. We'll kind of stay the biggest part this morning uh, in this. I don't know of, I don't know of any people that faced harder problems and bigger problems than the nation of Israel did. Uh, you can go back and you can study it and you think, my, 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 the problems that they, that they faced there. They had been in bondage for 400 years whenever we come into the first part of Exodus. 400 years, think about that in bondage. God up and he chose a shepherd that was 80 years of age. He chose him to bring and lead that nation out of bondage. In the fifth chapter of the book of Exodus, we find the Lord says to Moses and to his brother Aaron, I want you to go up and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh is just like a lot of people today. Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? So you will see that God will up and turn the Nile into blood You'll see the flies. You'll see the lice. You'll see all of these things happening. God showing Pharaoh uh, who he is, what he can do uh, in this. Then we find. Then we find the big one was chapter twelve. Whenever uh, the Lord told Moses, and Moses told the people, "You go out, get the best sheep that you got, uh, cut the throat." of that one, a sheep for every family, put it up on the doorpost, and when the death angel passes through, he will up and pass by that house when he sees the blood on the doorpost. Then we begin to move. Then we come to chapter 14 of the book of Exodus, and we find the Red Sea, and we see what God did. He parted the sea and the nation of Israel, and they were of they were a huge number of them, went over the Red Sea, or I should say, in the bed of the Red Sea, uh, no mud, didn't get any mud on their shoes, and so on. And for all of these years, and of all of this, this people relied upon a promise of God. Now think about how many years they relied upon a promise from God. You don't have to turn there. But in, in Genesis in chapter 15, in verse 18, Moses said, and the same day the Lord made a covenant. Now a covenant is a pledge. It is a promise of God. All right? And he said, a covenant with Abram, saying unto thy seed have I given this land from the river Euphrates unto the great river and the, the river of Egypt and unto the river of Euphrates. Over 400 years they relied upon that promise of God. This is what God said. Peter writing in the New Testament in 2 Peter in chapter 3 and verse Lord uh, verse 9 he said the Lord is not slack concerning his promises when God says something when God marks it down you you say all right that's it we may not understand all of it but when God says something that is it let's go to uh, to Joshua and chapter 3 uh, in, in this here. Now, remember, remember uh, this here. We have been, uh, we, came out of, uh, we came out of bondage, and then whenever we cross the Red Sea, then we're going to spend, 
we're going to spend 40 years of wandering here. Now, in Numbers in chapter 13, you don't have to go there, but in Numbers in chapter 13, the Lord comes to Moses and he said, Moses, I want you to up and pick one man out of each tribe, which would be 12. And he said, I want these 12 men to go in to this new land. We're going to call it Canaan. They're going to go into Canaan. I want you to go in there and I want you to spy this land out. So they're going to go into that land. You are familiar with uh, the 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. And these 12 men come back and they report. All 12 of them are going to come back and they're going to say, that land is just exactly what God said. There are going to be houses that we did not make. There are going to be wells that we did not dig. There's going to be fruit that we did not plant in, in this here. God said it was a land of milk and honey. And that's the way it was. All 12 of them would come back. But 10 of them said, that's right. That's right. But we can't up and we can't take it. Why? because we seen giants in that land. We not only seen nice houses, but we seen walls around these here and we can't take it. But there was two men, one, uh, one was, uh, was Joshua and the other one was Caleb. And these two men said, yes, we can. We can take, we can take the land in this. <clears throat> that brings us to chapter 3 of the book of Joshua in, in this here. And we come now and we're just about ready to go in to the place called Canaan in this here. And uh, the Lord is going to tell them as to what to do in this here, just like he tells you and I. Now remember, the key to the study is that what God says is true. When God makes a promise, God's going to, uh, to, going to keep that promise. But there's some things that I have to do. There are some things that, that you have to do. We can, it's one thing for us to, to sit and look at this infallible Word of God and look at the promises in there and, and sit there and say, okay, Lord, give it to me. No, we've got to do some things uh, in, in this thing here. So uh, the Lord makes the promises according to the plan that he has for us. Now notice with me in verse 9 of this chapter. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, now, We'll begin to look at how this thing works. Come hither, hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. All right? Number one, I got to listen to the Word of God. I've got to read the Word of God. We're going to see that uh, here in a little bit. But he's telling them here because we've got a giant task ahead of us in this here. We've been looking forward, looking forward, looking forward of coming to the, the Jordan River. Whenever we get over the Jordan River, there, there we're going to go into Canaan. There we're going to go into the land with milk and honey. It's there. It's there. But there's something that I've got to do. One, I've got to listen. All right. Now notice with me in verse 11. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. All right? Now, I got to listen to what God says. That's one. The second thing that I've got to do is get my eyes on the ark. The ark is a symbol of God. All right? And so I've got to get my eyes on God. Now, if I'm going to get my eyes on God, I'm going to have to take my eyes off of man 
because we have a tendency today to think of man. We think man can do this, man can do that. Man is not God. God is the omnipotent one. God can do anything. So what have I got to do? Listen. I've got to get my eyes upon God in, in this here. Look at verse 12. Now therefore take you 12 men out of the tribe of Israel, uh, out of every tribe of man. God did that. He told Moses to do that in Numbers in chapter 13. Now, he's telling him to do that again in this here. Again, think about, think about this. The key to this saying is I got to listen, I got to get my eyes upon God, and then I've got to do what God says. I can't do what maybe I think or what I would like to do. I've got to do what God says. So he said, take a man out of every tribe. Not two, not three, but every, take a man out of every tribe. All right? And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the cup of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap in this here. Get my eyes. Listen to what God says. Get my eyes on on get my eyes on on the ark, not upon man in this here. Begin to do what God says in this thing here, and he's going to work in this here. But when I get to the latter part of chapter of verse 15, look at this here. For the Jordan overflowed its banks at the time of harvest. How many times does this happen in your life and my life? Whenever we look out here and we'll say, I'm going to up and I'm, gonna, I'm going to start listening to what God says. I'm going to get my eyes upon God and I'm going to focus upon, upon God in this I'm going to do what God says, but I look at this and I find the Jordan is overflowing. That kind of changes things when we look at it for, uh, for man's viewpoint on this here. Uh, if, the Jordan, if the Jordan wasn't overflowing, okay. But the Jordan is overflowing in this here from uh, whenever the Jordan overflows, it doesn't flow from bank to bank. It goes a long distance uh, in, in this thing here. So I look at this and I think, well, the people ought to realize something because they could go back and think about what happened in Exodus in chapter 14. When they went back to Exodus in chapter 14, what happened? Moses, what do you got in your hand? I got the ark. I got the rod. Then you take the rod and stick it out, and you'll see that in chapter 14. And he did, and the waters parted. And we could look and say, okay, people, you you seen you seen what happened in, in Exodus in chapter 14. But this is a new people. A new people. This is not. This is not the same generation that we had back in Exodus in chapter fourteen, and that's a re That's that's one of the things today. We as older people have got to up, and we've got to walk and talk. We've got to believe in in this thing here. Now you'll say uh, uh, a, a different people. Don't you remember? Turn with me to Numbers in chapter 14 for just a moment. Turn with me there to Numbers in chapter 14. And let me, let me share something with you uh, about this here. Now, uh, it's very important for you and I to listen to God. It's very important for you and I to do what God says. And sometimes we rebel. Sometimes we don't like what God says. We don't like the way maybe God says it sometimes. 
And so this people, you'll study it from Exodus 2, to Numbers in chapter 14, you will find many times that this nation of Israel, whenever they come, whenever they come to a problem, like they, uh, like in chapter 14 of Exodus, uh, they cross the Red Sea. In chapter 15, they sang praises unto God. They were thrilled to death as to what God had done, and rightly so. Then before they got done with chapter 15, they needed water to drink. They couldn't find any water. What did they do? They began to murmur against Moses and Aaron and against the Lord. That happens to us sometimes in, in this here. We'll look to the Lord and we'll say to Him, Lord, how come you're not helping? How come you're not doing this here? And we have a tendency to murmur to the Lord in this here. Whenever we murmur, what do we do? We're having doubt as to God can do this and do that in this here. So God gets tired of listening to these people. And so notice in Joshua, in Numbers in chapter uh, 14, and listen here, your carcasses. Now, this, these people are going to die off. And the reason they're going to die off is because of their rebellion against God. You know why we don't see God working like, like we would like for God to work in our society today? is because we've got too many people that are rebellion against God. People today look out and say, I don't like the way this or that. I don't like the way God is doing this here. I don't know why God doesn't do doesn't do something about this or that. God is God. And you and I are to believe Him. I don't understand everything about God. I, I, I don't understand it. But I know, I know God is right in this here. And this people had rebelled. Now watch here in 29. He says, Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your whole number from 20 years old and upward which have murmured against me can you imagine that 20 years old and upper upward in this year are going to die in the wilderness because they murmured against god we have a tendency today to murmur against god and we wonder why doesn't God work? Why doesn't God open the door? Why doesn't God help me? Why doesn't God encourage me in this here? And yet, back in our heads and our minds, we murmur against this. Now watch this here. Doubtless you shall not come into the land. Isn't that something? Isn't, isn't that something in this here? Concerning which I sway unto you and dwell therein. And look at 31. But your little ones, which you shall, uh, you said should be a prey, then will I bring in, and they shall know the land which thou have, which you have despised. So from twenty years older, they're not going to come into this. So this is a new generation. When we come to Joshua in chapter three, they don't know. If, they, if, their, if their mom and dad hadn't told them about Exodus 14, they don't know anything about 14. They don't know anything about what happened uh, in, in this thing here. So here is a people. Here is a people that God says, I'll do this and do that for you. And here they are. And they're going to up. And they're going to get ready to go into the into the promised land but the Jordan has overflowed in this here. Isn't that isn't that something in this? Now I've got to keep my eye on the ark. I can't get my eye upon Moses. I've got to get my eye upon, upon uh, uh, the ark in this here. But I get to thinking about this, and I think about uh, this people from Numbers in chapter 14. 
this people, this young generation coming up in this year, have tried to keep and tried to do what God says in this year. Turn back with me to Joshua in chapter 1 uh, in, in this here. And I want you to notice with me uh, in, in this here. Now, when you and I come to a place like this, it's easy for us to look and it's easy for us to think about uh, what Moses did, okay? Uh, what, a, what a tremendous leader. Oh, he made mistakes. Sure he did. Uh, but what a leader he was uh, in, in this here. But in chapter 1, I find out that Moses has died. I don't have a Moses anymore. I don't have him. Now notice with me in chapter 1 in verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, arise and go over this Jordan. Now, again, I can't emphasize enough upon the word of God. Because uh, he said, get your eyes and, and listen to what God has to say in this here. All right? Now, he helped Moses. He directed Moses. But Moses is dead. Way back in the book of Exodus, I, I don't know how far back, way back in the book of Exodus, you're going to find, we're going to pick up a guy by the name of Joshua. And Joshua is going, and, and whenever we pick him up, you'll find Joshua is going to stay very close to Moses. He's going to listen to Moses. He's going to watch Moses in this here. Yes, He's going to watch Moses make some mistakes, but he's also going to see Moses do some tremendous things. In verse 2, the Lord said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore the, arise, go over this Jordan. See what, see what God says? Go over this Jordan. Many people are defeated today because... They know what God says, but they'll not try it. They'll not try it. And so he said, go over this Jordan in, in this here. That's great for me to look at it in chapter 1. In chapter, in chapter 3, it's a different story when I see, that I see it overflowing in this here. You notice what he said? All this, uh, thou and all this people unto the land which I... Give to them even the children of Israel. That takes you back to Genesis in chapter 15. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given to you as I said unto Moses. And then you'll see the same thing in chapter 15 in, uh, in uh, Genesis. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. What a promise. What a tremendous promise from God in, in this thing here. And I look at it and I think, isn't that something? One of the truths that is taught in the Bible is that we've got to focus upon God and not upon man. If I look at man, uh, I, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be discouraged because man, uh, he doesn't keep his word very much. Man has got he he runs to and fro uh, in in these things here. I need something that I can rely upon. I need something that I can trust upon uh, in in this thing here. And I found this in in my life as as a Christian. I found that whenever our problems get the toughest, the Lord gets the, the greatest for you and I. When our problems get the toughest, then we find the Lord getting the greatest in, in this thing here. So I look at him and I say this morning, Lord, I know you want me to lead this people 
across the river. I know, I know that's what you, and you've already told me in chapter one that you give it to us. It's ours. It's ours. Now, I, I, I look at it and I think, Canaan is ours because you give it to us. But you know something? I've got to take it. I've got to cross that Jordan. I can't, I can't accept it on this side of the Jordan. I've got to get on the other side in, in this here. And so I look at it and I think, how is this going to work? How is it going to work? And you tell me you give it to me. What, am I, what have I got to do in this thing here? So the second thing in this here is I've got to see how that God will up and how that he will up and give me that promised land. Uh, I, can't, I can't get it on this side of the Jordan. I've got to cross the Jordan. But it looks like an impossibility. But there's some things that I've got to do in order for me to get on the other side in this here. The same in our operating today. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13. And I look at this and I say, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. He said, I, I, I'm the omnipotent one. I can do all things. Wonderful. But I look sometimes and I say, I, 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 don't, I don't see him answering some of my prayers. Uh, and if I'm not careful, I'll begin to doubt. And if I'm not careful, I'll begin to murmur. And I know that I shouldn't do this here. And God says, wait a minute. I'm going to show how you can cross this Jordan River, okay? There are some things that you've got to do, he's telling the nation in this, and turn back with me to chapter three uh, in, in this here, all right? Now, you've probably already figured out some of the things that they've got to do because there's two or three things that this people has got to do. Now, remember, I gave this to you. It's yours. The, the Canaan is yours. The land with milk and honey is yours. But you've got to take it. Now, I look at it and I think in verse 3, uh, in, verse, in verse 5 of chapter 3, verse 1, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders unto you. If we're not careful, we go to the Lord and we want the Lord to do this and do that for us. And our hearts are dirty. He said, now notice what he said, sanctify yourself. In other, the word sanctified simply means set apart. Set apart. Uh, your, yourself in this here. In other words, clean your heart up. Clean your heart up uh, in, in this here. Uh, and I look and I think, how can I clean my heart up? Uh, I, I clean my heart up by repenting. Uh, uh, by saying to him that I'm sorry. Cleanse me as David of old said uh, from iniquity in this here. Remember, remember whenever David sinned against God and he sinned with Bathsheba and David for about a year, he hid that and then naturally all sin comes up and it's exposed as time goes on uh, in, in this here. And then uh, David, he, he gets where he can't, he, can't, uh, he can't handle this thing. And God sends a man by the name of Nathan. And Nathan, I think it's in First, Second Kings, in, or Second, or Second Samuel, chapter twelve. And Nathan comes to uh, to David, 
and he tells him kind of a riddle-like thing in this here. He tells him about the young Yule and, and this and that and so on. And then he looks at David and he said, David, what do you think about that? What do you think about that guy? And David said, I'll kill him. And Nathan looked at him and he said, David, thou art the man. Thou art the man. It doesn't hurt us a bit ever once in a while to stand and look in the mirror and ask ourselves, where am I going? How, how, am, I, how am I working? How, how am I running in life in this year? A clean heart. A clean heart in this year. That's the first thing that this people has got to do uh, in, in this year. It's displeasing to God whenever whenever we kind of keep the old heart dirty and, and this and that in this here. And he said, now, the land is yours, but you've got to clean your heart if you're going to go over uh, in, in this here. All right? That's one. That's one of the ways that, uh, that uh, they're going to get into the promised land. The second is in verse 6. Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. All right. Pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people in, in this here. All right. It comes back to us again. Clean your heart up. Clean your, clean your life up in this here. That's one. The second thing in, in this here, now you do what I say. You follow my orders in this. Do you think it would be easy for these priests to walk? They're going to be the first that gets to the, uh, gets to the water edge of, of this here. And they're going to have, and you'll see this, they're going to have to step into this water first. The nation of Israel is going to be back here. But they're going to have to do this. I look at it today and I think about you believe in God? Jesus said, you believe in me, believe also in, 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 uh, in the Father. And I look at this and I think about, can I? Can I lead the family? Can I do can I do what I'm supposed to do? Uh, and do I have enough courage? Do I have enough backbone to up and put my feet in the brink of this river? Can I do that? All right, now look at verse 11. And behold, the ark of the Lord, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over for you in Jordan in this here. Look at verse 13. I'll not use all of it. Uh, in this here and it shall come pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests of the Lord of all the earth shall rest on the waters of Jordan and the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand upon heat alright you see what, what he's saying you got to do this but it's not going to happen until you step into the water. you got to believe. you got to trust. you got to trust. I, I look at this thing, this virus, and, and, and I look at this thing and I, I think about, we didn't ask for it. We didn't ask for this thing to come. And I don't know that we've got the cure for it now in this thing here. What are we to do? What are we to do? It is the thing is the proper thing for us to do is to write, is to be mobs and things like that, loot buildings. No, no. What are we to do? We're to trust God. We're to trust God. We're to believe uh, that God can do this and God can do uh, that. I look at this and I think about what a horrible thing it is for moms and dads to trust. Put their faith and trust in God in these things here. But I look at these priests and I think about how they up. Uh, okay. 
You tell me to put my feet in the water. That's what you told me to do. All right, now watch him. And it came to pass. When the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests were bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. See that? And as, and as they bear the Ark were coming to Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped into the brink of the waters for the Jordan overflowed all the banks of, of the time of the harvest in this. They've got to up. Clean the heart. Be obedient. Be obedient. Do what God says in these things here. When I when I was working and thinking about this, I thought about uh, today. Uh, in, in in many places today, they might say, uh, "Well, I see what God says, but let's vote on it." Let's vote on it. It's not a majority thing in this here. You don't vote on something like this, yes or no, or in this, or somebody stands back in this here and say, well, I don't believe it. That's the reason why that God is not able to work in a lot of people's lives today is that they don't believe He can do it. I don't think it'd be an easy thing to stand and see that river overflow. But I look and I think about on the other side is a land of milk and honey. On the other side is so much better. But there's that river. There's that <coughs> river. Will I have the will I have the faith? Will I trust God? That if, well, I trust God that if I step out, that God's going to take care of this thing. Uh, and He tells me He will. He's already give the land. To, he's already give the land to us in chapter one. But I've got to take it. So I clean my heart up. I begin to be obedient to Him. I'm going to up and I'm going to follow the priest in uh, in in this thing here. Uh, and then you know something when I look and I study the Bible and I think about not voting or this or that in this here I think about you know it's mine but I gotta take it it's mine I've got to take it in this here and in order for me to take it I've got to expect God to work something out. God, God knows. God knows uh, uh, the the flood. He knows that the river is out of its bank. God knows that. And God can do all things. But am I going to trust Him? Now watch Him. And notice that the water, the Jordan overflowed all the banks all the time of harvest that the waters which came down from the above stood, now watch this, stood, and rose up a heap very far from the city, Adam, and, and that is beside Zaratan, and those that come down towards the sea, the plain shell, even the salt sea, which is Mediterranean, and uh, the salt sea, or the, or the dead sea, and, shall, and were cut off, and the people passed over, right against Jericho. I look at it and I think, can I trust him? I have not, James says, because I ask not. I have not because I ask not. And God knows that I can ask a lot of things. But I asked him to take care of this. And now I come down to the brink of the river. The priests have stepped their feet in, in this year. They've done what God they've done what God told them to do in this year. Now it's up to God. What is he going to do in this year? Look at the next verse. 
and the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on the dry ground. Isn't that something? They didn't move. They didn't move. And in the midst of the Jordan, in other words, in the middle, and all of Israelites passed over on dry ground, and all the people were passed clean over Jordan in this year. God waited, and I thought so much about this. God waited before he told them to cross the Jordan. God waited until that that the flood came. And then whenever the flood came, then you know, I, I, I thought about this. Lord, why why didn't you have them to do that before the flood came? God says, I'm running this thing, Judge, not you. And, I, uh, and again, I look and I think about whenever things are difficult, then God works the greatest in your life and my life. God loves us. Oh, how he loves us. God cares for us. And I look at this and I, I think about, yeah, he does because he gave his son to die upon the cross that we might have life, eternal life in this year. God wants to help us. He wants to do some things for us. Am I willing to let him? He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's what he said. He said, I'll, I'll open doors for you. I'll do this, I'll do that uh, in, in your life. Will you trust me? Will you do what I, what I tell you to do in this year? Don't be like the people in Numbers in chapter 14. Don't be like them. But be like the people in chapter 3. And you know what happened in chapter 3? He's going to stand the water up. And that nation of Israel is going to be able to march over on, on this here. And my, what a, what, a, what a thing that was going to be. And then in chapter 4, and we won't get involved in that, but chapter 4, uh, Joshua is going to tell the people, I want you to take, and I want you to take so many rocks, and I want you to put those stones in the midst of the Jordan out there. And somebody might look and say, why? And he says, because it'll be a memorial. A memorial. Every time you come, you can think about what God has done. How many times has God worked miracles in your life? How many times has God done some great things for you? Don't forget them. Don't forget them. And thank him, stop. And thank him for the many things that he's done for you. Maybe you're sitting here this morning. You're sitting here and you're saying, Preacher, I'm not saved. I haven't received Jesus as my Savior. You can come this morning. You can come to this old-fashioned altar. And someone will take the word of God and show you how, how to be saved today. Will you come? Will you do that? Listen, God gave his son that we might have eternal life. He gave his only begotten son. Come to him this morning. Come to him. Let's bow our heads. Christian people praying for just a little bit. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, Preacher, I need prayer. Would you just lift your hand up for just a second? Preacher, I need prayer. Maybe I'm not, amen, I see that. Maybe I'm not saved. Maybe I'm not saved today. Uh, is there one like that that you lift your hand up and say, pray for me, preacher, I need to get saved. Is there one like that? Is there one like that? God knows every part. God knows all things. Lord, as we come to, the, to this time, I ask that you'd help these people. Oh, Lord, bless, 
bless these people. Give these people a good, good week this week. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying upon the cross. Thank you for saving our souls. Now bless again. Forgive us of where we failed you. For I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's stand in this. And as Sherry sang, uh, plays a verse or two, will you come this morning? another verse when you come this morning. Dismisses, would you please? Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again this morning, God. Just so thankful to be in your house and thankful for the time you've given us here and thankful for those that have come out, God. And I just uh, pray, Lord, that you be with those that aren't able to come out, God, and just be with them, touch them in some way, Lord. We just pray so very much for them. We thank you for that message, God. And they would just be able to trust in you and follow through in the directions that you give us, God. And uh, have the willpower and the, and the, the, the abilities uh, to, to, that you have given us to go forward and, uh, and, and follow you, Lord. Lord, we pray for this country. We pray for all the things that are going on in it right now, Lord. And we just, we just ask that you guide us in what we're supposed to do, Lord. We pray for our leaders uh, at the state and local, the, the, at, in the federal level, Lord. We uh, pray for them that they'll look to you for the decisions that they're making right now, God. And, uh, that you'll just instill in them what they need. Lord, we pray for our missionaries. We continue to lift them up to you. We pray for those that are uh, seeing especially difficult tri trials right now. And we just ask that you lead them through that. We pray for uh, fruits for all their labors, Lord, even in this difficult time, God. We lift them up to you, Lord. We uh, just ask that you continue to uh, guide this church, Lord, and the decisions being made, Lord. Just We just pray for that. Uh, that that your will be done in all these things, God. We ask that you give us traveling mercy and bring us back next time safely, Lord. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen.